My name is Megan, and we're going to continue our generosity talks. And I want to welcome um, Dr. Rich and Michelle Malera. Um, we're excited to hear from them today. Um, I, our family has had the privilege of being um, the beneficiaries of some generosity from um, these wonderful people. So um, this is going to be w great to hear from them today. So um, would you tell us just a little bit about how you give to your church, your time, your talent, your treasure? Sure. So I um, work with the women's ministry here at North Central, and I lead a Bible study. And um, once in a while, I work in hospitality and do announcements. I was just told Joey should let the woman go first. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's very generous. Anyway, um, she deserves to go first. Um, I, I have the wonderful privilege of serving uh, in worship and singing, uh, helping to lead there, and also um, helping to serve on uh, the commissions committee, do a little ushering, greeting. Um, it's it's uh, a fun variety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me mention these guys have been, how many years have you been a, a members at North Central Church? A long time. Yeah. Uh, well, we were married here in 89, um, and we were certainly attending before then, so mm -hmm. it's been over 30 years. Okay, so from your young married life until now, you've been um, generously giving. So why? Why do you give? Um, well, I better Keep to my notes. <laughs> you guys have you settled in? Uh, for me, um, I feel like we learn a lot of things from our parents. Um, at least if you had parents who um, brought you up in the church, um, that was just kind of what you saw, what you learned. Um, my mother was a florist. Her way of giving was preparing uh, an arrangement, a fresh flower arrangement, um, and having it put on the communion table um, every Sunday. Uh, my father uh, was a greeter, usher, uh, sang in the choir, um, served on the board. Um, and so it was just natural for me to see how they participated in church. And uh, I saw the giving envelopes that my father, you know, you know, we don't have giving envelopes necessarily anymore, but that was our way of uh, making sure that we regularly gave. Um, and so that was my introduction into what I thought was um, giving was supposed to be. Um, so at first I thought, well, this is really, this is what's expected of me, and I should do it because that's what, it's the right thing to do. Um, and then as time went by, <clears throat> I came to understand that it wasn't just a duty, but it was a privilege to um, serve God with my time, talent, and treasure that he had not just blessed me with, but entrusted me with. Um, it didn't need, I didn't need all those things for me to tell me what was um, right. I knew in my heart that um, God had given me and blessed me with so much, and, and it was an honor to give back um, and a privilege to give back, and those are just some of the ways that we did that. Well, um, I forgot to mention that we regularly give financially to North Central as well. Um, we always have. In the lean years we gave, in the years of abundance we gave, it was just something that we did. Um, as a, he's right. As a child, I grew up in a family that we gave as well. Um, so we were given allowance. M my parents were very um, strict about us being financially um, fiscal with our money. So we would put money in savings as a little kid. Uh, we had money to spend, and we had money that we gave to church. And they believed giving to church was so important that when we planted a garden, we would give the first of every fruit to the pastor of the church, the vegetables. We'd <laughs> <laughs> so it's something you can do now, and he seems like he'll appreciate that. So we always gave. Um, but to think about why we give... I personally believe giving is a matter of the heart. In Proverbs 4, it says, guard your heart above all else because it directs the course of your life. So your heart directs your actions. So it's not about what you give. Oh, I give this much time, this much talent, this much treasure. It's not about that. It's the why behind the what. So when I looked at this question, here's my why. Because God's work and God's people matter. 
And if they matter to God, they need to matter to me. The, one of the last things Jesus said before he left the, hurt, the earth was go and make disciples of all people, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all the things I've commanded you. That's God's work, and the people are God's why, right? Why we do it. And so we give because God's work and God's people matter. Yeah, and I think that's so beautiful, right? Because we're um, the primary disciple makers for our kids. So you guys learned from your parents. And um, the Malaris have beautiful children and some new grandchildren. Um, and um, we've been able to see how God has also used them um, to love and serve their churches and, and us here at North Central, too. So that's been beautiful to watch them grow up, for sure. Um, so I know how generosity has impacted me. Um, one of one of the things I remember, um, these guys, we've known them for about 20 years, and there were times where I would get a maybe an encouraging note. Um, I remember one time getting a gift card when I was a young mom who wasn't working, just a little something to um, to kind of help me get back on my feet. Um, little things like that that these wonderful people would do um, just for me, and that's just me. I don't I don't know about all of you, but um, so I know how the generosity of others, particularly you guys, um, has impacted me. But how has that generos- generosity um, impacted you? How does being generous impact you in your lives? You know she's a better speaker than I am. Yeah. So you might as well end with the better part, so I'll go ahead. So I'll just say, um, she'll talk about this a little bit more, but giving is a, is a form of stewardship. Um, God gives us what we have um, and provides it for us. We don't necessarily earn it or deserve it, um, but he gives it to us, everything in our lives, to steward. And stewardship is important because, you know, things over time, things don't matter, um, but stewarding them well makes them better, and we need to steward what God gives us, whether it's our money or whether it's the things that he provides for us, um, and he's given us a place in this family. This is the family of God, and we're part of the family just like you, and if we're not giving to the family in some way, we're not helping provide a way to meet a need that God might have um, for us to give to. Um, as many of you know, I have um, a big heart for missions, missionaries, and those that serve full-time sharing the gospel. And I, I love, first of all, watching Michelle talk and teach others uh, about the Bible on Zooms or in person with students um, or adults. doesn't really matter um, she teaches me every day, um, and, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, it's just amazing to me how she makes the Word of God come to life in practical ways for those she shares, shares it with. And for me, um, medical missions is a, something I love, and um, I haven't been able to do that, but um, I, we were able to do... Um, do serve the central New York community through the Emmaus uh, Vision Center. And uh, in the clinic yesterday, I was just reminded, uh, like many times, that we have a chance to share Christ um, with someone in need, giving my time and my talent, because that's easy for me. Um, but sometimes sharing Christ isn't as easy. But the desire is that they would see Christ and that I would be able to share Christ with someone who has an open heart. And so giving makes those opportunities, whether it's giving our time, talent, or treasure, giving makes those opportunities happen. Um, and with all of that in mind, I just wrote this one last thing. It says, every day we have an opportunity to use what God has placed in our lives to make a difference in the lives around us so that ultimately people will see Christ and the hope that he has given us so that they can turn to him and know that hope as well. So, by giving, you're not giving because it's about you. You're giving because it's all about God. Mm-hmm. And he's the one who makes the difference in what you do with what you give. Very good. See, I didn't have to say anything. <laughs> but I do want to share one thing. 
Okay, so a lot of you know that I'm very competitive. In fact, I will cheat to win. It's just, it's just who I am. I'm working on it. But I'm really not working on it. I just said that so I sound more godly. But here's what I think. I know, we know she's not. I know. Everyone who knows me knows I'm not. Okay, but this, think of using your time, talent, and your treasures like playing Uno. All right? So one of my best definitions for stewardship, and I hope I can remember it, it's like using our God-given abilities to manage our God-given resources so that we can accomplish God-given feats and and things, so we can do things for God. So we all have time, talent, and treasure that God gives us, right? The one thing we all have the same is the time. We all have the same amount of time. Even though you say, no, you have more time than I or whatever. No, we all have the same amount of time. We have 24 hours in a day. But the talent and treasure is kind of different, right? And it's like we have them in our hands, and God says, okay, I trust you to use them. So I think of it like uno. So you know how, like, you get seven cards, and everyone gets seven different cards, but your goal is to get rid of all your cards, And so if we think of our time, talent, and treasure as like our Uno cards, and we're like getting, we want to use them. We want to get rid of them. And you know how the worst way to lose Uno is if you're stuck with a wild at the end because you waited for the moment to use it. You waited to use that wild, and you wasted it. And I don't want that to be me. I want to play my wild card. I want to give it all. And we laugh sometimes because we said, um, Talent, we, we know it's different, but Rich will say, I'm better at giving my time, and you're better at giving my treasure. <laughs> That's what he says. Because I'll give anything away. Because it's his money, so I just give it away. So, and so how I've combated that is I have this post-it note that has the word time, and it says, things I must experience, and the must is in capital letters. Because I don't want to give my time, but if I think I'm going to miss out on something, I'm going to give it. So that's how I, I've learned to like be better about giving my time because I must experience it. I don't want to miss out. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to be stuck at the end of life with a wild card that I could have used and I didn't use it. Mm-hmm. So give. Give your time. Give your talent. And give your treasure because God's work and God's people matter. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> I want to mention, too, that when we're talking about generosity, um, we're, we're talking about here in our church family, but um, generosity is throughout our whole life. You know, you mentioned um, the Emmaus ministry that you're part of, being on missions. Um, many of us are in, um, you know, vocations that aren't, you know, in the church. So times that we get to use our time, our talent, our treasure um, to give um, is in all of our life. And God is at work in us to be able to bless those around us. Um, and you guys certainly um, are doing that for many of us and people in your, um, your business and women in, um, at FCA. And um, we're very thankful that we have um, great examples. And so we want to encourage you. Um, what is your talent? Um, whatever treasure you have. We all have 24 hours, um, but um, just pray and ask God how you would give um, in your life um, for his glory and for your good, too. So thanks to you guys so much.